welcome back, Panther fans. I'm David Brown, along with Ryan Graham. Hey, y'all. Tim Thurber. Hello. Who forgot his beer. And this is State of Atlanta. <laughs> welcome back, guys. It's okay. He got it. That's all that matters. <clears throat> and, you know, you need to be in game day form, uh, Tim. We had a game coming up this week. You can't be a dragon like this on drinking the beer. <laughs> we made it? We made it. We made the entire offseason. We game did. week. Yes. Yes. You guys looking awesome. forward to this one? Of course. No, no, actually, I'm I'm I don't I'm Not sad about it. I'm sad that football's happening. Well, understandably stupid understandably stupid question. So uh yeah. Uh we got um we got Rob here with us. Rob from uh As for Football talking about Army. Uh thanks hey, for joining us, on? Rob. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Excellent, excellent. Um man, let's just dig right into it and uh start talking about it. Uh so this is game two of a weird three-game series between Army and uh, Georgia State. Uh, I did check, just so you know, the weather is supposed to be a lot better this year than it was last time that Army came to town. Uh, Those hurricanes clearing everything out, right? <laughs> exactly. It's supposed to be actually pretty, pretty nice. Uh, yeah. We, we were we were nervous about having a, a nooner game, but I think the high is uh, like 80, 83 for the day. Partly cloudy. Should be great football weather. Have so, you been calling it a nooner this whole time? I, call I am now. <laughs> am I just now picking up on like how inappropriate that is? <laughs> Last <laughs> year was the season of Nooners, Ryan. You didn't know that? What? Like, the whole COVID year was Nooners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> didn't so, feel like uh, Rob, it. Uh, so, Rob, uh, <laughs> were, you, were you able to make it to that game last uh, two years ago? Yeah, I was actually there at the game two years ago. Uh, again, it was a it was an awesome game. Did not like the result. But again, I'm coming from the Army perspective, so I'm sure that uh, we can get into that. But uh, I just like to see good football played. And I think it was uh, it, there were some moments in the game where it was like, eh, I don't know if the refs are going to get involved or not. And usually when it's a close game, you know, the, the, the moral victory is, well, you know, the refs screwed us over, right? You can always make that excuse. But the reality of it is, is like if the game is close enough where a small uh, refereeing decision – impacts the game then it's kind of on you and i think that's the way that coach munkin would take it as well so he's he's pretty straightforward you know if we lose it's not because we uh it's not because we didn't play well enough it was because we either didn't execute or something else happened so i'm looking forward to this one uh, uh the matchup is super super tight if you've been watching the betting line over the last two weeks i mean it's less than a field goal so this should be an exciting game yeah, and and coming down like you know as as we get closer to it, I think it started off at four, four and a half, and it's down to like right around two or something now. So yeah, uh, Vegas doesn't know what's going on or money's flowing. It's happening. Yeah, I always say that when it comes down to any kind of uh, sports matchup, it's it's uh, you're playing two games. You're playing the opponent, and then you're playing uh, the ref, the officiating. So if it does come down to a bad call, it's like well, you know what, I should have been better than one bad call throwing the game, but it was. It was a it was a rough game. That weather, I feel like that wet weather really played into Army's strengths with uh, their ability to run the ball and everything. So we did get fortunate in that game. But um, I feel like it was kind of a down year for Army. That was like you know Munkin had come in there with a little slow start, but then it picked it up big time with uh, you know multi bowl bids and um, multi bowl multi bowl years and everything. And I just happened to be I think what I put it down uh, you know eleven and two in twenty eighteen ten three in 2017 and then dropped down to eight and five the year that we played or is that or five and eight five and eight sorry i had that backwards uh the year we played so um when i saw that getting ready for this i was like man i've been talking about georgia state putting a whopping on uh army all off season and now i'm like this game's gonna be a lot tougher than i thought it was uh oh, <laughs> you kind of alluded to that uh, a minute ago but yeah it's um it's gonna be a tough one yeah i, I think it always is you know and and with army it, gone are the days of you almost having a heart attack like every other game because there was a game when I like when I was in college there was a year that the difference between a winning record and a losing record was a total of seven points and so there were <laughs> games that they were like losing like at the last last second you know not taking teams into overtime and then or going to overtime and not being able to finish so I think that's one of the things that they have worked on and improved a lot since coach Munkin has been there is finishing in the fourth quarter you know and then being able to put, uh, you know, put teams in a position where, like, they played Ohio State tough for a half in 2016, took Oklahoma to overtime. So the team has improved, and, you know, I think it's time they're for a marquee upset, but we can't uh, 
take for granted any of the opponents as we're leading up to any of those bigger games that uh, kind of get the Power Five conference uh, on the table. And of course, you know, you have to show out, particularly in, in Georgia State's case, you have to show out either way because you got to make yourself represent well in order to even have a chance to get close to the playoff, even with the adjustment to the new playoff schedule you know, adding more teams doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to make it in. It might just be, you know, the power five show for a while. Right. Right. And I think, I mean, we've been saying, I'm sure uh, you've been saying it uh, the entire off season as well is uh, it's a, this is a good week one matchup for both the programs to kind of get an idea about where we are going into that season. So I, I, you're probably thinking the same thing I am, you know, we win this Georgia state wins this game. You know, we, we feel pretty good about the entire season as a whole. It's not one of those, well, you take a beat and you keep on going. Uh, I'm sure army fat kind of feels the same way. You, you win this game, you, you, you're ready. Uh, you lose this game and you're like, man, what's the season going to have in store for us? Yeah. It, you know, one and no start is always great. You know, I think that, <laughs> that's, that's for anyone though, really, because, you know, start is starting off. You just got to keep winning every week. So if you can yeah. stay one and no every week, then you're good. Right. And I yeah, think that's yeah. just a mentality that you kind of take into the season, but yeah. you know, there's, there's so many distractions with, you know, the last year and, and, Nobody wants nobody wants to admit that 2020 was a train wreck for almost all of college football, but it was. Yeah. And now it's how do you reset after having a, a horrendous year like last year? And maybe it wasn't the play, but maybe it was just the environment that you were playing in, you know. And like if you look at Army playing all those games at home was a huge advantage. You know, they they got to beat Air Force at home, beat Navy at home, won the Commanders and Chiefs Trophy, and didn't have to travel. That's all huge for Army. And then you kind of have to reset the ball club and, and work through the summertime and do all the military training that the cadets have to do and then be able to uh, show up and, and play a good game against uh, Georgia State, which has proven to be a pretty tough comp, you know, pretty tough contest, even though there's only been one matchup. But Georgia State is, is, is a good, solid football team. And I think if you played in or out of the Sun Belt, you still had an opportunity to, to, to beat any team that's on the on the field. Yeah, I agree completely. Hey, I want to we get a special guest, Ben Moore, coming in from Panther Talk uh, to jump in here. Rob, uh, I would I don't know if you've ever got a chance to listen to this podcast before, but uh, Ryan, nor Tim, nor I know anything about football. We just are fans that uh, we know more about tailgating. And that's what our communication has been all week, more so than uh, the game. Ben, on the other hand, he knows the ins and outs, the X's and the O's, the Jimmy and the Joe's, all those kind of guys. So. He was gracious enough to, to join us to talk a little bit about that. Ben, what you uh, what you got for Rob here talking about Army? Yeah, you know, it was it, it was interesting, uh, you know, kind of doing the deep dive. You know, there, there's no super seniors uh, on Army's roster. It's not a thing, as we, as we know. Uh, you know, there's with, with the military academy, I believe those are uh, first lieutenants uh, when they when they graduate or even second lieutenant. So, um, you know, there, there is a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, lack of starting ability or, 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 or change in the starting lineup. I know for coach Munkin on both sides of the ball, coach Elliott mentioned it yesterday in his press conference, I believe four uh, of the five offensive linemen are different. I think in the front seven, you have, you know, four or five uh, new faces at, 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 you know, who are starting, um, you know, and no, no quarterback to, to be named as of yet. I do like the, the little, uh, you know, chess game there by, uh, by Jeff Munkin. Uh, but, you know, just talk about, so I guess some of the new faces uh, certainly that, uh, you know, will, will be factors on Saturday, specifically a quarterback and, 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 you know, in the, uh, in the a, a back B back. Yeah. And, and that's true. Again, you know, uh, last year was not a traditional triple option for the army team. So it was kind of different. When you look at tire Tyler's uh, background, you know, started off as a, as a, as a H back or a halfback and then got moved into the quarterback position. So there wasn't a lot of the triple option feel, but uh, when you listen to the coaches have been talking this off season about, Hey, this is an inside out offense. So if I'm talking inside out offense, that means I'm probably going to come at you at the midline and then start to establish the option after I get the positioning on the inside. Uh, yeah. I would agree with you that there has been a lot of turnover, but again, it's army. So we're used to next man up. So perfect example is the the starting linebacker, Eric Smith, that that kid's going to be a superstar. If you listen to that guy talk, like he's already leading and he's in college still, you know, but uh, great uh, talent there. And, and again, you always see that like Mr. America linebacker show up at army. That's going to get, you know, 20, 25 tackles, 30 tackles, you know, early part of the season, and he's going to be all over the field. And 
as a guy that used to play a defensive line many, many moons ago at a much, much smaller high school, when your linebackers are making all the tackle, that means your interior line is doing a good job. So they're keeping him free to roam in that, you know, seven to 10 yards off of the ball. And then he can and collide. The, the biggest issue that that we're looking at is kind of the matchup, you know, quarterback versus the secondary. So, of course, you know, Georgia State has a solid quarterback. He's got some decent wheels he can run, but can he throw? And traditionally, Army secondary is a little bit more beefed up, and the secondary has improved basically every year that Coach Munkin has been there. So what we really want to do, I think, is contain you guys on the ground and then force you to throw and then take advantage of uh, it's going to be like the game inside the game to really watch as uh, as we start getting into, you know, part of the this in the third quarter. Yeah, I think, Ben, that's what you've been saying on the message boards and uh, your articles is basically this game is going to come down to uh, really just Georgia State's offense and Army's defense. Yeah, just maximizing possessions. I mean, I went back and looked at the, you know, play-by-play in the 2019 matchup. And as you guys mentioned, I mean, the weather was just simply awful. But uh, out of the seven possessions, basically, uh, that Georgia State had, they scored touchdowns on all four of them um, and and, uh, fumbled inside the five-yard line on on the fifth. So, uh, you know, know, turnovers are are that. You know, I probably set the over-under on uh, on punts at one. And and Coach Elliott mentioned it even yesterday as saying, Hey, look, uh, you know, they need to find a way to steal a possession, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, deferring basically to the second half, getting an opportunity there or, or something that Georgia State fans have clamored for a long, long time. Uh, maybe making a play on special teams, whether it's in the return game or, you know, blocking a kick and, and, and conversely uh, not allowing that to happen. Because uh, I believe Army led the nation last season and block kicks with six or seven. Uh, Coach Elliott brought that up, talking about how sharp the special teams unit needs to be and how focused they needs to need to be. And, and we, you know, we can talk all day, obviously, about the level of discipline and, and uh, they're going to be in the right places. And Coach Elliott said that as much uh, yesterday. Yeah, I think that you made a, a good point on there about uh, you know the, the, getting the, getting those extra extra possessions like deferring to the second half. And I think uh, Ryan, Tim, you can back me up on this one here. Last year we were really good about giving the ball over on the very first uh, play of the drive when we had the ball. So good, yeah, if we can defer, if we could defer and just let Army start off with the ball, that that puts us in a better position. In general, yeah. I I wanted to add though. I mean, uh, you know, you were Rob. You were mentioning having a quad, you know, pressuring him to to throw it more. Man, that that guy can air it out. I'm not, the fun that. I'm, yeah. I'm not afraid of that at all. I, I mean, he's got lots of receivers around him. Uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm so confident in this offense. I just, <laughs> I, I, everyone's just going to have to play their hearts out. That's, that's what it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess you could say, like, you know, last year, uh, Quad did have a little bit of an interception problem, but I think that's just the the freshman year kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think that uh, you're going to see probably um, Quad's going to try to air that ball out. He's going to try to get the, the ball in the air this year. And uh, for better or worse, uh, I think that's, that's probably going to be the game plan. Well, that's going to be the difference is that, you know, that wonky turnover that happens out of nowhere, hopefully it will remain dry so we don't have to worry about any issues with the ball being slippery. But uh, – I think that turnover turnover game is going to be important. And then again, you know, special teams and, 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 you know, Army did have one of the top ranked defenses in the country last year. So seeing, seeing this, you know, it'll be a good test for the, the Georgia State offense to see if uh, quad can actually get the ball moving. And I think uh, being able to, to contain him actually helps the offense or the helps the Army defense overall just because yeah. you know if you get put the clamps on a on a talented quarterback and then I can play keep away with ball control so if I get a good you know 28 30 minutes of ball control throughout the course of the game then it limits his touches and then it forces him to make decisions under pressure not because he's being rushed potentially by the passer you know by the defense but he's got to fight against the clock too so if he's down a score or two I think putting that pressure on him you know, although he's a you know an upperclassman, you know was a red shirt sophomore, so he's been around for a couple of days. So he understands he understands the team, he understands the game. But you know, situations in gameplay when you don't think that you're going to get the ball back, you start pushing a little bit too hard, and you can make a mistake that that could be costly. Yeah. Hey Tim, we haven't heard your beautiful voice tonight. Uh, why don't you uh, <laughs> spend something for us up here? No. Th- well, first off, thanks Ben for answering one of the questions I had. <laughs> no super seniors for Army. 
<laughs> you're always coming prepared with the stats. I thought it was interesting from the in the first game in 2019 that we did pass through the air fairly well in that horrible, you know, torrential rain and weather. Um, you know, other good point, they haven't seen quad. They've only seen Ellington. Not that, you know, it's bad to see either of those quarterbacks. They're both studs. I think I'm excited as Ryan is about the offense and defense coming back. We have a bunch of super seniors. I mean, all the cards are on the table. We have no excuses not to perform this year, I think, overall against Army. Was that a question for Rob, or was that just no more of a... Just okay, comments. excellent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I, kind of a, uh, not really necessarily a, a game question, but just an in general question. Uh, Rob, what is the general feeling of uh, Munkin uh, with Army? You guys uh, big, big fans of Munkin over there? Well, first and foremost, I have to say, like, we almost had a heart attack in the offseason with the whole Kansas thing. So... You know, we had guys like searching on Twitter and social media, like checking out flights that were flying out of uh, you know, Newburgh <laughs> to make sure that he wasn't going to Kansas. Because, again, I, I think really, you know, the coaching the coaching staff is just as big of a, a big of a benefit, not only just having coach there, but, you know, the defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator. If all those guys picked up and went to Kansas, you know, who doesn't want to coach in a power five team? Right. However, you know, you know, the over under on. Kansas, I think, I think they're supposed to win like two, two games. And I said, I don't even think they're going to win one this year. A ball program, it, it's a pretty stiff competition, you know, and try and bring defense to the big. Oh, come on now. That's almost, that's almost ridiculous, even as a no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're getting they, a little, uh, don't a little connectivity defense. there. That's, I don't know about the rest of you guys. I'm there. getting a little bit of a uh, yeah, but all in all, choppy all, there. I think mine is we love like Coach Mo. Okay, we want him to stay as long as we can. Like if we can sign him to like a Bill Snyder three thousand year contract, and we that he brings to the team. You know, I think <laughs> yeah, you can tell it in his body team. language when he's on the sidelines that uh, it's 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 really good. Like I can remember the first time I heard him. Uh, well, I didn't hear him, but I saw him mouth a uh, word that uh, starts with F and ends with truck, like fire truck, and uh, <laughs> on the sidelines. And when I saw him say that, I was like, oh, they're going to start winning. Like, why? Because you have a coach that will get in their face and uh, make them understand that, like, that was a boneheaded play. And right. we've had previous coaches that are like, well, these guys are going to be officers in the Army. Well, guess what? You know, the common tongue is sometimes, you know, some rough language. And, and you know, you're going to go to a form foreign country and may have to kill somebody so rough language is okay and i think the sooner that you understand that as a as a leader at the academy you know regardless of whether you're a cadet or you're a coach as soon as you kind of crack the code on that i think you do a little bit yeah better. i think you uh, you cut out just a little bit honest there with uh, everything but the general consensus was that you guys are big fans of uh, monk and want to keep him around as long as you can the reason why i asked the question is because i don't know how I don't know how familiar you are with, with Georgia State and our rivalries, but Munkin came from uh, a little uh, post-high school education department in South Georgia <laughs> over here, and uh, that uh, there's no love lost between uh, the two programs. And I don't, th I don't think we ever played uh, uh, a, a Southern coach team uh, under Munkin. I think he left the year that we started. We, we joined up together in the, when – the trash down south joined us in the Sun Belt and FBS ranks, but uh, the um, the general fan base, knowing the where his roots are, where he's come from, uh, not a big fan of the guy around these parts. Uh, what do you say, Ben? Yeah, it's interesting, and I was, uh, you know, we, we we were talking about it a little bit earlier too. This is kind of a homecoming as well. You have two former Georgia State staffers, um, and and, and Nate Fuqua's mentor, the defense coordinator for Georgia State, Nate Woody. Uh, they run the exact same system. The defenses should look very very similar for good reason on Saturday because uh, it's going to be basically the teacher versus the student. Uh, also, linebacker coach Shield Wood was here at at Georgia State for a year before he joined uh, Munkin staff as well. So they're 
there's going to be a lot of familiarity uh, there and, and, and a little bit of beef, uh, as David alluded to there as well. Uh, you know, Munkin was at Georgia Southern. Um, they never, you know, faced each other there. But I'm, I'm sure there's uh, just knowing the coaching profession. I'm sure there's uh, some some beef somewhere at some stop. Uh, they they know well, so it's going to be uh, very interesting to to watch. And and uh, you know, as I continue to maintain, if the defenses look the same on Saturday, there's good reason for it. Well, he was he was there to have a hand in being too scared to schedule us, right? <laughs> um we we asked we you know that was that was the biggest thing you know i know i know then ad cheryl levick you know wanted to uh wanted to get a game before they were you know conference mates and and they weren't uh weren't interested uh so it it's it's interesting but you know i continue to maintain i, I love this series I, I hope it continues in some capacity you know air, air force has been to the georgia dome and georgia state has played air force as well anytime you can play the academy um, you know, just from the impact as well, from from the game itself, from the atmosphere, um, but just knowing Metro Atlanta and, and how many um, active duty reserve as well as retirees are, that are here, uh, I think is huge. You know, I, I know some some fans may not understand the importance necessarily being college football play, fans down here in SEC and ACC country, but I, th I think it's a major deal. And, and, and kudos, obviously, to Georgia State and Army for for uh, getting this series uh, put together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Rob, are you going to be down here this weekend? I think we got another connection issue right now. Well, like it. The one, <laughs> so one guys, thing is, uh, they did frozen. not bring up beating Southern last year as one of their key games. One of their key. Yeah, games. actually, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good point, uh, so Tim. Props, props uh, I did not realize this. Not Someone. Someone mentioned this on the message board just this morning, and I, I went and looked at it. So uh, Georgia State is the only Sun Belt team with a winning record against Army. There's not been a lot of matches. Uh, the Army played a beat Arkansas State back in 2005, and then last year uh, they put the herd on Sun Belt by beating the Trash Down South and uh, Monroe. So uh, Georgia State's the only team that's uh, in the Sun Belt that's beaten Army. Um, yeah, it's kind of a cool thing because we rarely beat anybody. <laughs> so what you're saying is we need to win to keep the streak up, right? We got to keep the streak going, man. But and we have a we have a third matchup heading up to to West Point next year as well. That's true. Yeah. If Rob's uh, audio is back, I wanted to ask him how he thinks Army's going to fare this year across our season because you know they have some pretty wild predictions about getting to New Year Six, and I'm curious what he thinks about how the season's going to play out. I think it's going to be a, a, a 10-win season again. I think the, the roughest one is probably going to be the Wisconsin game, but I think we have a reasonable chance of beating that. I think uh, we've come close so many times, you know, taking Michigan to the stretch, taking Oklahoma to the stretch, and, and playing, you know, the Ohio State University pretty tight for a half. So I think the, the talent is there. It's just the opportunity to, to kind of close out one of those games. So I think uh, I'm going to say – and uh, near uh, the Fort Bragg area, so I can drive to it and, and, and check out the the final game of the season. But again, I'm I'm looking forward to Army Navy this year because I'm actually going to go to the game for the first time in uh, 20 plus years. I actually get to sit in the stands and watch it. And uh, that Army has right right about Thanksgiving is going to be Liberty because Liberty, you know, they showed up and showed out last year and. Uh, Looks like that one's going to be a pretty tough uh, matchup as well. Whatever you do, beat Liberty. That's all we have to say. For yeah, as I was yeah. Say, yeah, when you're playing Liberty, I guarantee you, you're going to have some big Army fans uh, over here. So especially, especially the guy uh, dead center up there. For... <laughs> Not it's, the, it's the only letter I've ever sent to our our university president was. Uh, a note telling him not to associate with Liberty University. So <clears throat> not to let him into our conference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like you said, your expect expectations uh, are pretty high with Army this year. And it seems like uh, media and everybody is kind of agreeing with you. I think the, the worst I've seen is an eight and four prediction and then definitely a, a 10 and two with uh, potential losses only to those P5s. But we'll uh, we'll let you guys beat Wisconsin if you uh, head out of Center Park Stadium with an L. If you guys are okay with that, I'm okay with that. How about can we, can we shake on that a gentleman's agreement? No, I'm going to have to say no deal on that because I would tell you take a look in the stands this weekend and there's probably going to be a lot more black and gold than you're going to see blue and white. 
because you're going to have a lot you know what? of grads there. That was uh, actually one of the things I had to bring up was uh, we're here and sell out for the game. And uh, we dab- we all have kind of connections with uh, the athletic staff. And definitely uh, Army has been trying to come out in force, uh, asking for a lot of seats, a, lo- a lot of club seats, a lot of uh, uh, suites themselves so i'm looking forward to it i think it's always fun you know being in an atlanta team i'm a a fan of all atlanta teams and it doesn't matter if it's pro or college you're going to see fan bases from all over because there's a lot of transplants in atlanta it's an easy place to get to it's an attractive place to vacation to so we're used to seeing other fans in the stands i think it makes it fun i think it makes it exciting i'm actually really looking forward to it Uh, i I got i asked you earlier but i don't think your connection was good are you going to make it down uh this week yeah, I, I'm going to be there and uh, looking forward to it because I'm going to do the the big army tailgate and then we're going to come down and watch the game. Uh, I'm trying to recruit my nephew subtly, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. He might he might stay in the uh, the Atlanta area and, and go to school somewhere close. Uh, you know, maybe he'll end up uh, wearing some uh, blue and white. Uh, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, I would encourage you, uh, come down. Uh, le- leave the Army tailgate a little bit, about maybe a half hour, 45 minutes before you're planning on it. Come see us on the bricks tailgating, and uh, we can uh, see each other in person and have, have a drink or two before the game. Uh, hey, guys, uh, we've, we've got, kept him on here for about almost 30 minutes. Let's get to uh, last questions, if anybody's got anything for Rob, and we'll, uh, we'll see him out of here. I was just going to say, I'll bet you a beer you're wrong about the attendance that we'll see more blue and white in the stands. And 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 you know what? I'm, I'll happily lose that because I love sharing beers with, with people. So it's not a big, <laughs> not not a big deal to me. But I hope you like you PBR because that's what you'll be getting. <laughs> uh, well, no, the Naga Naga set or whatever that we've got in the stadium. It's uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a uh, you know a big baller or nothing. I'm... <laughs> cheap cheap beer in our building, Rob. You're welcome to uh, drink up. <laughs> yeah, but is it leftover from 2020? Who cares? Is beer? I don't think Ryan and I left any beer leftover from uh, from 2020. <laughs> All right, great. Well, uh, thanks, Rob. I'm really looking forward to it. I hope, hopefully, we'll see you uh, on Saturday, and I look forward to making the trip up to West Point next year. Uh, obviously, we get a chance to play at Army. That's that, I'm going to take that opportunity the first time I get it. All right. <laughs> Good luck this season, Rob, except for Saturday. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right. Thanks, Rob, for joining us. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, to, unfortunately, we had some uh, technical difficulties with the internet connections there. But, uh, you know, uh, I think, uh, was it Ryan or Tim, one of you guys texted me during the middle of this, that he, he has no real uh, confidence in the Panthers this year, does he? No, no he, 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 he said that the, the game plan is to be two scores up. Yeah, what? it's not going to happen. Sorry, that's a bad, that's a bad game plan. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, honestly, that that would be a great um, uh, uh, strategy to have. Just be two scores up, right? Like sure. that, that, should, that should be our game plan in every game. You know, mm-hmm. heading into UNC, just be two scores up, and I think we'll be we'll do all right. Now, the start of the game, be two two scores up, and you're you're good. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So Ben, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, yeah uh, some good, some good, some good talk and everything. Uh, before we let you go, I want you to get a good chance to uh, plug out your new podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Side, side project. Uh, one, one of many, as you guys well know me pretty well, um, but the fun bell podcast, we just cut it uh, this evening uh, with Tim Buckley uh, previewing uh, Louisiana raging Cajuns. They're, they're looking um, at another big year, uh, obviously, uh, they're with head coach Billy Napier staying, uh, which was big news. And then they open up uh, in, in a ranked matchup, ranked on rank uh, in Texas uh, on Saturday. So pretty exciting uh, information there. We caught it, cut it up with him. Uh, if you missed our our, our broadcast a uh, couple weeks ago, um, they had uh, you know we had Keith Gill on the Sun Belt Commissioner, which was great. Uh, he spent 45 minutes with us, and we talked to a a, a tremendous amount of uh, information and um, you know talking about the league and talked about basketball and football and the new TV contract and, and really just hit a bunch of things. and And we're going to try to really focus on you know Fun Belt stuff. Um, you know we we made uh, game predictions this week, um, so that'll obviously be out tonight uh, as soon as our guy Dusty Thibodeau. Um, you know, if the Warhawk report cuts that. And then uh, we're also joined with Jeremy Harper, uh, who comes from the Arkansas state side of things as well with the, uh, with the red, with howraiser.com. So great guys, uh, pleased to be joined with them on Tuesday nights and, and we'll, uh, we'll chop it up and continue to do it um, throughout the course of the season. And, uh, and uh, looking forward to, uh, 
to uh, for you guys to give us some information and, and uh, you know, go from there. So I, I do appreciate you guys letting me jump on for sure. And, and uh, excited to see you guys on Saturday. Yeah, I would definitely recommend anybody that can stomach hearing about Sunbelt teams other than Georgia State should definitely give it a listen. Uh, ben tries to get steer it in the right direction, but of course, you know, uh, you got those other fun belt teams to talk about. So, no, it's we good time. Really well, it's uh, it's one nice. of the few podcasts I, I do listen to regularly. So, uh, now that I, ne- been- I needle Georgia Southern a lot. So, <laughs> I'm looking forward to them being in my mentions now that we're in, fun, in, in, in the season. Uh, we, we did talk a little bit about the Georgia Southern Gardner Webb uh, game. Uh, all of about 30 seconds, and uh, yeah, that was that was fun. I still couldn't tell you who their quarterback is going to be, and and frankly, it's somebody that uh, you know I don't know. May, maybe he got his bean to grow in his Ziploc bag, so I don't know. Uh, John Weaver's got a question for you here. Uh, when which week are uh, we going to see a Georgia State preview? We we are working on it. We're working uh, diligently on the guest as well. Uh, we're probably going to do that uh, the week before UNC, uh, which will obviously be next weekend, or the Charlotte game. So we're we're uh, we're working on that. Uh, we're trying to bounce around the league, you know, quite honestly, and talk about some matchups. And, and we're even going to get to a point where we get bring on some uh, some players and some former players and stuff like that. So there's it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, we we've we've just been overwhelmed with the response so far. The download numbers have been tremendous. Uh, thanks to everybody that's, that's been jumping out there. Uh, what's been fascinating to see, you know, fan base to fan base. And then because uh, each of us is an, basically an alum of one of the Sunbelt schools and we haven't previewed any one of those schools yet. So, um, you know, you get a lot of beef uh, that goes on with that. Hey, when's the Georgia State preview or hey, when's the ULM preview or uh, different things like that. But I, I think Dusty uh, will be having the ULM preview coming up soon. Um, we're, we're efforting a, a Terry Bowden interview as well. So looking to have Coach Bowden on. Obviously, he's a, he's a new coach in the Sun Belt, but a lot of storylines, obviously, in the league this year. And, and uh, you, know, you know, from Butch Jones, Arkansas State, to, um, you know, obviously with Napier and, and uh, you know, what's going on at App State and can Coastal Carolina uh, go from, you know, the media darling and, and what they're looking like uh, this season, as well as, you know, Georgia State, you know, being kind of on that next level up, you know, and, and yeah. Troy obviously being thrown in there as a potential surprise team as well. So as we know, guys, man, there's there's lots of storylines. I'm just freaking glad it's here. Uh, Saturday is week one. Let's go. Uh, I'm excited to get down and see you guys and, and uh, you know, in the tailgate area. Uh, excited to actually see football and uh, honestly stop mm-hmm. t- talking about it. But hey, uh, Ben, have you, have you ever heard of the uh, elevator pitch? Yeah, I have. <laughs> I think you need to be in a in one of those towers in Dubai to get your your pitch out. <laughs> I, I'm I'm good with it. And if, and if and if anybody wants to sponsor, we're looking actively looking for sponsors for the Fun Belt Podcast. So we make it maybe need to have. You should start a GoFundMe. Sponsor the podcast. <laughs> David, you can, you sponsor, can absolutely. You can hey, listen, Jer- Jeremy Harper is a big old duels guy. So, you know, we need to get him on here. I'm telling you guys would love him. He's I an hour. Know, he's an hour get along with us that well. I don't, yeah, I, I disagree. I don't, Ben, I can tell now that you don't ever listen to our podcast. If you think <laughs> the duels is appropriate. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, Ben. We'll see you on Thank Saturday you. and uh, we'll man. talk to you. We'll talk to you that season well. as well. Yeah. Right. Take care, man. Appreciate it. All right, so we're uh, we're 33 know, minute, 33, 33 minutes. I can't even talk anymore. <clears throat> these, doing these vodkas beforehand really get you good. Woo. So, yeah, uh, yeah. So a good start to the season it was week one, guys. We're, we're we're going into it, man. What do you guys think about this game? Well, I think we're going to be you know a, a few scores up rather than two scores down. Uh, that's that's what I think. Um, so I, I'm excited about it, man. I I, <clears throat> I think. I think there are some gross miscalculations going on. My worry is is our defense and missing our strongest weapon to, to South Carolina and how they can adjust and move th- move, move people around and, and you know get things right there. I don't know all the technical terms that all these other people did, but my biggest worry is our defense. So, yeah, what are you thinking, Tim? I'm thinking you let Ben off the the call without predictions. That's what I'm thinking. Oh yeah, yeah, but I don't I don't need to have Ben spend 13 minutes telling us why he doesn't make predictions or doesn't post predictions. <laughs> Is that what he does? I don't know. Yeah, he doesn't like doing it anymore. He used to. Well, he say so he he always kind of beat around the bush with it. Before, if you ever asked him anything, he'd say, "I have an article coming out ahead of the game." And now, if you ask him about a prediction, he says, "I don't do predictions anymore. I'm not good at them." So. He was. Always very, um, you know, Ben Ben is a very optimistic person, and he's very confident in our team, and I think he overshoots uh, our skill level often. 
Yeah, I don't think you can do what he does and not be optimistic. I mean, if you're right. going to be if you're if you're going to be pessimistic, you might as well get a job for the AJC. That's, that's right. That, that's where you belong. So, AJC uh, Athletic, one of those places. Yeah. I, I'll tell you what I uh, doing the yeah. You know, as I've said all all off season, going in this game, I predicted a, a Georgia State win. Like you know, just it's no question we win that game. But as I you know sat down to start looking at some stuff and reading about Army going in this game, I definitely tell you it got me. It's got me more nervous than I was. I still think that there's absolutely no reason why we can't win this game. It's just going to come down to you, you got to play the game. We'll see what happens. But I think mm-hmm. that it sounds like if uh, if Rob is representative of the Army fan base, they are uh, very much underestimating what Quad Brown brings to the table. He is yeah. an uh, electric X Factor style quarterback. And, you know, every time I think of something that is a, is a way for them to uh, to beat us, you know, you know, our defense or or our, uh, you know, the interceptions or whatever, I always find an answer to it. Yeah. Yeah. Quads a year seasoned he, more. He's going to be more accurate on and everything. He, everything we've looked at, everything we've seen from Coach Elliott and from the other players have talked about how dedicated quads been to the season, uh, getting prepared for it. And then you look at our defense. Yeah. We complain about our defense that first half of the season. But you look at the second half of the season last year, and we were just as good as they come. So I think you know Fuqua figured out what was working and what wasn't working, and you know we were a few ball bounces away from having a nine and one regular season last year. Yep. And I think I think that gets missed by a lot of the people that do these predictions. And obviously, you know the biased fan base is looking at it uh, from their their one side. So I'm feeling good about the game. What I want to know is. About- what I want to know is tailgate. All right. Yeah. I, well, I was asking you guys and you were saying, you said brunch, but I'm like, I don't know what that, I don't know what that means. Man. You know, I mean, it can mean, that means anything. Yeah. You, yeah brunch is kind of a free for all. That's what the great thing about brunch is you mm-hmm. can call it, you can, you can say it's, you know, breakfast, you know, lunch thing, whatever, but you can have scrambled eggs and you can have a double bacon cheeseburger. It all, it all, it's all good for brunch. As long as yeah, the mimosas exactly. on the table at all times, brunch counts or bloody Mary. Yeah. That's, that's the beauty of brunch, right? The key to brunch is the Bloody Mary or the mimosa. You gotta have it. No yeah. yeah. Well, I will it's definitely absolutely. bring in a couple of bottles of uh, champagne with me, and a couple of, or maybe, well, really, for every two to three bottles of cheap champagne, I'll bring like one cheap bottle of like you know store bought uh, OJ because you don't want wanna... OJ, right? Exactly. Exactly. Hey, we got a request here, Ryan. You bringing your biscuits to the to the tailgate? Uh, I, I believe that Norman has uh, Norm is out. Oh actually said he was going to do that on my behalf. All right, but well, then there you go. I do remember him saying something. Bring like that. that in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, Norm, Norm was talking about doing some little sausage balls and stuff like that. I, all right. I, I don't know what I'm doing yet, but we'll, we'll have some good stuff out there. Maybe, we'll have a good maybe time. I'll do like a, a salmon with some, uh, with some uh, um, what you call it, some bagels and cream cheese or something. Smoke, yeah, apparently there's, there's a, a lot of demand for some smoked cream cheese you could, you could bring out there. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, no, I think that's a TikTok thing. Okay. I don't even know. Yeah. All right, everyone get on TikTok. Go. That's yeah, fine. We, I got some we, good ideas on there sometimes. I save a lot of recipes from TikTok. I'm not going to lie. There's some good ones on there, man. There's some good ones. Not gonna the lie. only reason I created an account was uh, Gordon Ramsay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just a so good wait, TikTok to follow. That's all. Ryan, you think we win. David, you think we win. And you're yep. on the opposite sides. But whatever. I think we win, too. I think we win by uh, – I'll go – 10 points, uh, 35, 24. I'll even give you a score. 35, 24. I, I don't, I'm not really good at the whole score thing. Cause I don't know, uh, how 11. score, do I don't it. know how to, I don't know how to math up scores. If I add seven and six and I don't know. I mean, so how, what, you, you said that we're, it's only like a two and a half point spread or something. If that's the right word. Um, but like who, who, who are they saying is going to win? Who Georgia was? state. Georgia, Georgia state. state. Okay. Yeah. And so whenever, sure. whenever they do this kind of, whenever Vegas does this, it's basically a, uh, they give three points to the home team. So on a neutral field, right. Army would be favored by one. Right. It's what I they just, call it. You know, I'm, not, I'm just not that worried about Munkin. Like our, our defense has figured out this triple option and I feel like our guys are going to get ready for it and they're, they're going to get ready for it for another game that they have on the schedule. That's more important to us. And I mean, there's no reason for us not to, you know, really get, get this worked out in practice yeah I think, a game you know and I, I think another thing that may rob may be underestimating as well is you know army goes in there and they play pretty much everybody because they have to they're independent uh there's not a lot of teams that they play that are re- used to playing triple option option teams 
And Georgia State's one of those because we have that trash down south every year. We we right. have to we we have to be prepared for that every year. Yeah. Um, so we we it's not yeah. like it's a brand new thing. Plus, you know, you get the extra weeks to prepare for it. Uh, I mean, uh, Coach Elliott said in his press conference that it doesn't really matter whether the, this is the first game or the fourth or fifth game. They they know how to prepare for it. Or maybe that's a testament to playing. Um, maybe maybe there's actually a positive to playing uh, the trash down south. We get the the triple up option easy preparedness every year so i think it's a bonus overall that they're the first game right we've had the most maximum time to prepare for army and then you know coach can just say hey treat them like you treat the trash down south and then we should be good to go it'll be a w exactly exactly as you know as a as a growing up a georgia fan you know playing georgia tech and triple option there i i always said that the reason that was a toss-up was not because of athletic ability or anything like that it's because it's the only team on the schedule that is playing that weird ass offense. Gimmick offense. Yeah, well, and so you have like one week to do it. And how much time do you to use to prepare for that? But you know, like like I was saying, at least this time we have two games. So it like sort of makes more sense to spend a little bit more time on it. And they're two very important games to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Week week one and anytime you're playing that trash. Absolutely. So yeah. <laughs> uh so speaking of them a little bit, um, ESPN SP plus had their total win predictions out there and uh, Georgia state comes in as, you know, uh, having a better than 50, 50 shot at winning six or more games this season. Trash down South d- does not fare so well. One thing I found kind of interesting was they did put, uh, you know, we, we've seen this all season, lo- all off season long, whenever these rankings come out, it's kind of like they, they put, you know, the, the apps and the coastals and, uh, and Lafayette up at the top. And then it's kind of like, we're either above or below Troy. And that was the same thing this time. But the article was, they put Troy ahead of us. Uh, the, the article was talking about how they felt like that um, a lot of the media analysts are sleeping on Troy, that Troy should be, should be so much better this season because they had these games, like four games that were decided by a touchdown each or, you know, a, a single score. I'm like, uh, we had three of our four losses were the exact same way. You know, they, they played coastal better than us. I don't know what I, I you got to throw that coastal game out there last year. Like that, that wasn't even worth talking yeah. about. Yeah. There's no, no way that, that's the outlier. That's why I, I took, you know, a lot of stat classes at Georgia state and we learned about outliers and that is an outlier. That you game doesn't make any sense Man. whatsoever at all. I, you, you can't just ignore this outlier though. Cause it no, was over we'll, four we'll quarters on the field. We'll ignore it. No, absolutely. We will absolutely ignore it. Uh, I hope our I hope our boys aren't ignoring it because uh, you know they got they got demolished. And, oh uh, no no we, we are it. going to ignore the coastal loss as a uh, description of how our team is, and we're definitely going to focus on uh, you know getting our revenge on them on that horribly ugly teal field. Whenever the hell the game is midway somewhere. Oh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll blame Norman. Norman says that it was the only game he left early. Well, if you wouldn't have left early, we would have come back and scored 50 points in the fourth <laughs> quarter. That's all on you, Norm. Thanks a lot, big guy. Um, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> uh, what what happened? Happened? One interesting thing I thought about, and the it was nothing to do with the actual context of the the ESPN article about the SB plus stats and everything, but they listed all their conferences. And of course they have their P five conferences listed in the little bread breadcrumb thing first. Uh, and typically Sunbelt comes in last because alphabetically we're the last G five conference, but uh, no, they had AC and they had Sunbelt uh, first two G five conferences. So there was somebody put some thought in there and they, they were listing Sunbelt as the second best G five. I think they're probably right. So I don't have yeah. anything else to say. I think they're probably right. How do you even refute that? Uh, but because uh, I don't know, I I'll, I just take it all personally and just don't like the other teams in our conference. So I don't want it to be good. Oh, that part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's so see what else. You can, not, you can not like our conference and still be like, yeah, it's the best G five or the second best G five. That's not even it, saying it, a lot. It's something I struggle with because, like, there's this talk Lafayette's playing uh, at Texas, and so they feel like they can beat them, and they, they maybe they can. Texas isn't that good, so yeah, right. But I'm just like, I uh, so if Lafayette beats Texas and we beat Lafayette, then we're better than Texas. That whole thing, whatever. And I'm kind of like, no, I I don't want anybody to ever think anything positive of Lafayette at all. Like, I want us to do well. 
but I don't want anyone else in this conference to do well because I don't like anybody else in this conference except for Tim. Texas State. There we go. It's a little bit long. My favorite team from the West. Second, <laughs> only to you all out. I like man. No. <laughs> the only the saving grace though is that if Lafayette beats Texas and we beat Lafayette, then we're better than Texas. Right? I mean that's what that means. Yeah, sure. That's all it means. Yeah. You can you can like hope that they do well so that you can use them and leapfrog them. No, I'd rather just beat Lafayette and then beat Texas in a bowl game. I mean, me too, but I would rather so here's what I would rather, right? Lafayette beats them. We beat Lafayette, then we beat Texas in the bowl game. I I lost track of that about um one we beat them in because we only got to the bowl game because of strength of schedule because Lafayette beat Texas. Uh, oh okay okay. Well, we're gonna go twelve and zero, so our strength of schedule doesn't matter. We'll be a um. I just anytime someone agrees with me, I gotta throw it on the screen. Norman Norman, agreeing, Norman, Norman, agrees Norman agrees with me. Norman, so. come on, Norm. <laughs> I'm the last person who said something. <laughs> so so wait, David, you want us to be in our own conference called the Georgia State Conference, which is the best conference. And then we the, play the Georgia other State teams is, from other conferences. The Georgia State is Georgia State Conference. Yes, that <laughs> conference. Did you say David <laughs> wants to be independent? Is that what you just said? Because no. No, David. I would rather be independent, honestly. Oh. No. No. Yeah. Have you have uh, you checked out UMass, New Mexico? I've never been to UMass, New Mexico. Have you checked all that out? That's two different things. There was a comma there. There, there. There's a big difference. UMass and New Mexico are nothing like Atlanta. Uh, that's true. In the, in the, but, in the uh, heart in of case. football country, we could we could play pretty much an entire schedule of SEC teams if we wanted to if we were independent. Oh no, I don't. I don't even know where you're at right now, man. You're drunk. Go home. I'm in my. Well, I am home in my oh, basement sure. actually. So. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, obviously, being independent is difficult, but uh, I never thought about being independent until you said that. And right now, I'm loving that idea. I mean, I'm a couple of vodkas and a few beer, and I think it's a, a fantastic idea to go independent. You're wrong. Play play nothing but P5 teams? Yeah, that wouldn't happen. Throw, throw yeah. a bone at Kennesaw State every once in a while? Because <laughs> like, we just wouldn't play at home anymore. We'd just get like only pay games to go to big P5 teams. Um, I do yeah. like watch parties. I do I like watch parties. Those are a lot of fun. It's like, like, I mean, it's like tailgating, stuff. but everyone else does all the work. That's true. I, I feel like I made a gross misstep here getting, getting David's mind started on this topic. Sorry, guys. <laughs> all right, we'll move on then. Uh, I, nothing to really talk about, but there was another bowl projection, and obviously bowl projections before preseason are worthless, but I love bowl projections, so I'm going to talk about it. And it's a Western Michigan rematch. Again, right. at, at the Lending Tree Bowl in uh, uh, the Mobile metropolitan area. Cool. So. I like that all the bowl predictions always include us. Always. And there's uh, two <laughs> schools out of the state of Georgia that are um, being absent of every single bowl projection I've seen so far. So... That's fun. Why don't? Why aren't you including Norm's comments now, where he says David has lost it now? Uh, because he disagrees with me. As I said earlier, anytime you agree with me, I'll put it on screen. But <laughs> see, this is a hey, hey, you know, if you guys want to hear all the the things that are negative about me, we need to get a producer of the show to throw this crap on the screen. But as long as I'm doing it, it's going to be all positive, all me, all the time. So the big question is, I can see that uh, Norman said I blame it on the bourbon being at Ryan's house. So the big question is, did he shit in Ryan's toilet? <laughs> did Norm was Norm at your house? Um, Norm, I think so. Yeah, is that is that the one game the actual other people came <laughs> to your place? Well, uh, we had a, a good number of people, yeah, besides besides the little coastal crew. Yeah. Yeah, the coastal crew are that that the, the fifth quarter coastal guy, he's been hitting me up big on the State of Atlanta Twitter account lately. He's been, you know, uh uh talking positive things, wanting to get back on the show and everything. So I'm not, he's not invited. <laughs> nope. All right. Here, see, here we go. See, see Max, Max knows how to get on, uh, how to get she on the screen. She means Dave and Buster. She really likes arcades. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that about her. I've heard how much she likes uh, playing old uh, Donkey Kong. And, yep. uh, <laughs> uh, Mech Warrior is what I heard. So. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. There were some other Georgia State games, actual, legit, real, for realsies. Put them in the books games over the past week. 
uh, men's soccer uh, went one and one, uh, losing to North Florida and beating Mercer away. So <laughs> the men's team has not won a game, a real game in the new soccer comp- complex yet. Hopefully they fix that. Uh, they're playing um, uh, UNC Asheville this week on ESPN Plus, and they're 4 0 and 1 against UNC Asheville. So maybe that's a, their first win there. Also got a game at USC Upstate. Women also uh, went one and one. They're two and two overall this season. They lost at the the um, the dogs out east and uh, beat up on Davidson 2-0. So that's cool. They play play the previously mentioned Kennesaw State and Mississippi Valley State later on. Women's volleyball. You, it, it, anytime you guys have a comment about any of this kind of stuff, just jump on in there. Oh, we'll do. We'll do. Oh, Tim took a breath. I mean, I thought he was going to say something. Uh, volleyball went one and two. One, uh, so that volleyball kept us from going e- going five hundred on the week. Unfortunately, uh, they uh, they lost their own invitational, the GSU invitational, and they went uh, one and two. Unfortunately, but then they got uh, a North Florida invitational this week, playing Virginia Tech, Davidson, and and North Florida. Yeah, snag so. a W. I'll take it. Yeah, you'll take it. You'll take it. Uh, all right, see, let's see. We're for 51 minutes in. I got a, a couple of small things we can talk about. We'll do that in the last call. Uh, we'll talk about, because I want to talk about College Game Day, because that was a fun event at the stadium. We'll do that in last call. And then, uh, of course, you can't go a week anymore without having a little bit of a realignment talk. Uh, we'll more. talk about that as well. As well. So, um, And we're doing something new this week. I want to check it out. See how it works. Uh, we normally we record our last call just between the the three of us, and you know it gets posted to our Patreon page. So uh, our Patreon members will be allowed to uh, or be have the ability to live stream our uh, our last call thing, and then it'll be available on the podcast on um, Fridays. Everybody for free like normal to our Patreon members. Uh, whenever I get around to it tomorrow morning, posting it and everything. So consider joining our Patreon, patreon.com slash state of Atlanta. You get access to the last call early, and apparently you get to watch the live stream a little early. You get discounts on our merchandise. You get discounts on our bus trip, which our bus trip is going to Auburn. I can't find my thing. Uh, booze bus. The booze bus going to, that's the wrong thing again. Nice. Good job, David. Yep. Going to Auburn for that game. Uh, 60 bucks. You get the bus, you get booze. We have a good time. Uh, come join us. Save 10 bucks if you're one of our Patreon members. Uh, yeah, that's all I got this week, guys. Uh, until we get to last call, what else you got? I think we did enough. We did. I think it was a good time. It was a good time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shout out to all the fans that came out, um, to the game day on Saturday. There's a lot of fun fans. I know we'll talk about it on last call, but. For the free public people, shout out to all the fans. For sure, for sure. Georgia State is Georgia State. And Georgia State is definitely Georgia State. <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, guys and gals, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you next week, and we'll do a last call. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys.